Hello, I'm Catherine Housley, and we are recording live from the beautiful courtyard at Fox Point Library <laughs> in, on Wickenden Street in Fox Point. We are going to be creating a sculpture especially for this space. And everyone who works on this workshop with us is going to be a part of it. <laughs> We wanted a project for this courtyard that would go with everything that was already in it, yet somehow complement it and add something else to it. And after going through a number of ideas, we came upon the idea of a tree. Yes, because a tree can grow up from the ground and go up the wall and move around those beautiful fox paintings that are already there. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> All right, so we are going to draw this tree on here before we then wire. Now, I am going to do a drawing in chalk. The nice thing about chalk is you can erase chalk. Every artist usually ends up drawing something over and over and over again before they finally hit on the perfect thing. So if I don't do this right the first time, I'm going to be doing all the redrawing off camera and I'll show you the finished thing, but let's get started. Alright, how is this chalk? Can you see this chalk? This part? Ah, uh, yeah, we can see it. Okay, right now I'm just going to do a central line that kind of turns this up around where the letters are. See, I'm, kind of, I'm responding to what's already on the wall. So, now if we want to do some branches, I think this is a good place to bring it. And we're going to give it that spiky look like the foxes have. This is going to give you an idea of where we're starting. Now keep in mind too, this tree is going to grow off the wall, not just flat against the wall. So some of these things I'm drawing, this is going to project off of the wall. So, what do you think, Miss Carla, of our basic form here? I think it's great. Okay, we may not have to redraw this. Woo! And let's see. Oh, here's another good slot for the branch. And, oh, I can just see something hanging down here. But, we also want to. I'm short, so I can't reach all the way to the top. But we want to make that go up. So you see, we've all got all these nice opportunities for things to come off of this. Alright, record. Alright, so Carla, you had the idea to have this stand out a little bit, right? Right. So you know what I thought of? You know those tomato stands where the tomato plants go oh, out? Oh, yeah, yeah. It might make a perfect base for this because it's wider at the bottom than it tapers. Yeah. We could use it as a base. And they also have a means of anchoring on the ground right. and have the tree touch the wall, you go out from it, very organic. I think that's really cool. I think that's a good idea. So, I, yeah, so um, I'd like to mention that this often happens with art. You start out with this idea of what you want to do, and then as you start working with it in, as an actual physical form, you find out that the idea is not the same as the reality, and you have to keep adjusting. This is part of what art is about, adjusting, 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 and solving problems as you go along. So that's how we're going to solve our problem. All right. We're well, using a tomato stand. <laughs> Alrighty then. Okay, so we are going to make some flowers. Yeah. Where's the beer for flower? It is so pretty. Love this. Thank you so much. Can you imagine a bunch of these growing up out of the ground? It would be so beautiful. Yes. And we talked about at the base of the tree, since there's a little bit more space under the, the one fox illustration, we could add flowers growing up next to the tree from the ground. Yes. That would be awesome. Because that's what we're going to be doing when we build that tree. Mm -hmm. We're going to be putting plastic shapes and gluing them together, kind of like a mosaic. Mm. We're going to have a mosaic tree with 
Oh really? Don't they? I, I am not a, a plant connoisseur to the extent that I can tell you what a crocus is. What oh, a crocus. they are the first flowers that bloom in the spring. There's oh. little, little tiny ones on the ground and they're usually like purple, yellow, yeah. and white. The first gray flowers in <laughs> the spring. Although actually what comes out before that are these plants called snowdrops. Oh, I've heard of those. Yes, and they're beautiful. Are they white? They're white, but they have, uh, they have some orange centers to them. And they actually grow in the snow. That's why they're called snowdrops. You think I should color down mm -hmm. the middle part, like into the, the neck of the bottle? I think you should try it because that's something I have not seen you do before. Okay, let's see. Maybe I'll make it uh, a green color. Oh, this is a really good green color. Oh, yeah. It's very grassy and fresh and yellow, just like all the new. Yeah, I have to tell you, it is such an improvement to be able to look things mm. up. Because in the olden days, when oh I was my. in school, you had to find a book or ask somebody. Mostly yeah. you just didn't know stuff. Yeah, mostly and you wondered. just didn't know And that's stuff. why I used to spend almost all of my spare time at the library mm. when I could. Just the librarians knew everything. Uh. They were so smart. They spent time, all that time around books. Oh, I know. And you know what else I liked about the librarians? Oh, that's pretty. You know what else I liked about them? Is that they actually went out of their way to find special books for me when, mm. when they knew what I loved. Oh, nice. And I just thought that was so great because when I was little, both my parents worked. And I'd come home and no one was home. My sister and I would come home. And I kind of felt a little bit like <laughs> and the librarian made me feel special. Oh, that's nice. It meant so much to me. I am going to... Oh, look at that! Ooh, beautiful. Ah! Oh, that's exciting. Let me modify this one to make it pointy. Yes. Oh, wow! It's going to be kind of like a sunflower. Oh, this is cool. This is a really fun project, I have to say. Yeah. Because it's kind of like sculpture, but it's also like drawing, but yeah. it's also like painting. Oh, fun Yes. Now, I could just see these hanging from our tree. We're growing up. I, I think they should grow up from our ground, quite yeah. honestly. Maybe we can make a little blossoms that come up and tree, little ones. Oh, yes, little tiny bottles. We could, oh, we could cut them, we could even cut them out of the sides too. We could. We'll do them right out. Alright, we're about to do this. This one is only about to do this. This is good. These are good in those. So, this is one that I colored before. Um, last week when I was doing my story time, I colored a little yellow spot. But looking at it now, I can see that if I cut pointed petals out, it will look kind of like a sunflower, and then I'll color the whole thing in yellow. Maybe with a brown middle. Let's see. And I started out with a short post on one and all to go down. <laughs> change of plans way. again. Yeah. Always a change of plans. Now. Yeah. Alright. So what do you think? Oh, I think it's lovely. I like how long and elegant the petals are. Yes. I'm not sure they all match. Sure. Yeah. Oh, this is what I wanted to do. Apparently there are flowers, and I think this might be one in Japan. I just learned about this on the internet. Uh, there's a flower that grows sort of off to the side so that it, it doesn't even try to look symmetrical. Really? Yeah, it has sort of a, a tilt to it or something. Huh. And it's kind of beautiful. I like beautiful. this one. Now I'm wondering, should I like put the inside of the screen? Did you do the inside of yours? I did, but we also we also talked about using. Now I don't know if it would fit there. Of course, you could cut them smaller, but using the caps of the bottles uh, oh, yeah. for centers. Oh yeah. You had oh I think you had a pink one from one of the bottles. Now you know what I am going to do. I am going to slice open one of these water jugs and start just making some of these shapes. Okay. Oh, this is beautiful. This is going to be a lovely yellow color. You know what I'm cutting out? Mm -hmm. I'm cutting out the star shape. I thought that looked like a star. Yes, and because I didn't draw it first, it's not a very mm -hmm. good star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the thing is, it is not a symmetrical star, but that does not make it not good. Well, it's also like all over the place. So you know what I'm going to do? Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut this out and say, okay, this is my starting point. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make a smaller star out of it. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't look as quite as 
This is a reason that it's better to use the scissors because yeah. when you use this, it tends to go like this in the blast and it's very hard to control. So I just to throw that in there. See, see, look at this star. <laughs> this is pretty bad. It's not terribly star shaped. No, it's not terribly star shaped. But let's see what I'm doing. Oh, look at this. It's, it's improving. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy as I just need scissors. So, I have to say, my granddaughter just turned five years old. Oh, wow. Yes. She likes to color. She likes to paint and she likes to draw. And she also likes to make up stories. Mm. Does she draw the story girl? Um she makes up the stories and then has characters act them out for her. Oh, it starts like very small as I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm making a star. Oh, and I have to try something. I want to see if I can punch a hole in this. Sure, I'm not a hole in this. Because this will let us know what else we can do. Oh, it worked! Look oh, at that! Nice. Oh, that's so cool. So this is something else that you guys can know. You can make ornaments and stuff mm. that hang in your windows. Or like a mobile? Yes! Oh, Carla, we should make it over. <laughs> we should. We should. We could make part of the sculpture, a moving sculpture. Oh, we could. There was this, there's this artist, you might know his name. Uh, I'm from Michigan originally, and in Grand Rapids, there was this artist who had a, a sculpture outside of the art museum in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It was huge and made of steel, and it very slowly rotated. It was a giant mobile. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I think it was like basically self-perpetuating, you know, it didn't have a motor. Uh-huh. Or maybe it just moves from the wind, I'm not sure, but my sister did You know, I have to say I visited a friend who lives in Michigan and we went to the Detroit Museum of Art and I saw that big hall that big hall that all the walls were painted with murals by uh, Diego mm. uh, Rivera, mm. who was um, Frida's sometimes on and off again husband. Right, Frida Kahlo. Yeah, the, the amazing artist. And um, oh, this thing was incredible. It was just absolutely amazing. It's like you walked in and the ceilings were so high, the whole room was white and it's full of light and the paintings on the wall. It's my mouth dropped. It was just so incredible. So we have managed to come up with some flowers and we have managed to figure out what we're going to do next week, which is we are going to get a tomato base. Yes. And we are going to start building our tree off of it. And then what we're going to do is are we going to have some plastic that kids can stop by and get pieces of and take home and color? Yes. I will uh, prepare plastic containers and we'll I'll cut some of them up so you don't have to cut them too much yourself if you can't or don't want to and we you have some markers you can send them uh yes I do all right so I will uh put up uh some information on our Facebook page detailing how you can come and get those oh look at this Carla mm -hmm. by the time I get to the center and I've done adjusting and adjusting and adjusting I have an actual nice looking oops i have an actual nice looking star oh, beautiful yes so we can we can incorporate this to our to our design mm -hmm. i can hang it we can hang stars on our tree oh that would be nice yeah oh that is so cool i'm gonna um keep an eye out for different plastic bottle tops because i think they would be good even just as part of the mosaic but also as centers to the flowers like you said Absolutely. This bottle is an orange juice bottle and it has a really interesting oh, yeah. deep bottle top. Very nice. So I'm going to keep an eye out for that. I like that. I'm going to be saving lots of things between now and next week. And also, we didn't use it today, but I brought a green plastic bottle. So it doesn't have to be perfectly clear plastic either. It can be colored plastic and you can color it or cut it into whatever shape you want. 
and it will still it can still be part of the project. Look! Oh, it's, it's a like star a, flower. A rainbow star flower. Yes. Ooh. Oh, we can put things inside of it. Yeah. <gasps> Ooh, we can have we can have things growing inside of our flowers like butterflies. Oh yeah. Oh, I want to like, make a butter fairy. Little fairies. Little fairies. Oh, oh my so goodness. Cool. All right, well, I, I think we have our, our actual band ideas. And you know what? If you guys have ideas, let us know. Mm -hmm. We get very excited about new ideas. You can comment on the video. You can message us uh, on our Facebook page. You can ask questions on our Facebook page. And there's also an email address um, on PCL's webpage, topfamily.org, where you can ask questions as well. See you next time. <laughs>
an entire skirt um, inspired by the Marilyn Monroe skirt from Some Like It Hot. Which oh, is on the yes! And she made it out of the little plastic cups that you put condiments in. Oh my goodness! And she cut the bottoms and the rims off and then had these little strips that were like little, almost like scallops. Uh -huh. Because she flattened them out. And then she crinkled them. Each one folded back and forth, back and forth, and had these lines going down it. And then she stitched them, sewed them to a base to make a whole skirt. Oh my goodness! And she invented that. And it was beautiful. Wow. You know, if you could see my face, my <laughs> mouth was open with shock and astonishment <laughs> while you were telling me that. And I know how much work it takes. Yes. In fact, I was, um, I helped her with that. And we stayed up all night towards the end working on it. Happened to be the day that uh, Prince William got married. Oh my goodness. So we stayed up and then it was like four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> in our time zone, watching the wedding because we were working on her plastic skirt. It was for a, um, a competition called Runaway Runway, a recycled fashion show. Oh, do you watch Project Runway? Oh, I have watched it a little bit. It is very inspiring. Yes, and they always do uh, an unusual object mm. uh, challenge where they're like, one time they had people make uh, clothes out of cars, hmm. which seems like it would be pretty much impossible to do, but you wouldn't believe what you can do with seat belts. You weave them. Wow. Yes, yes. This woman named uh, uh, Koku, I think her name was, she wove these seat belts and it made this incredible, incredible material that looked very luxurious hmm. and she made this voluminous coat out of it. It's just gorgeous. By the way, don't use this one because it's bad. Okay. Yes. Not bad in that it's done anything wrong. It's behaving or anything. No, it's, it hasn't done anything wrong. <laughs> it's just run out of the uh, marker Ooh, this one's good. Oh, baby. You know what this reminds me of? Mm -hmm. In the olden days, they had quilting Ah, yeah. And my grandma in Iowa actually belonged to a quilting group. Club. Mm -hmm. She and her girlfriends would get together once a month because they were collecting stuff in the mm -hmm. and they would make lots and lots and lots and lots of food. Mm -hmm. And they would sit and they would eat and quilt all day long. Wow. That's so fun. Yes. We have programs like that sometimes at the library where people come and crochet and together uh -huh. and chick chat. It's not all day. I think I want to draw. Uh, line on one of these, so I'm going to need a shirt, please. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try making this with a scalloped edge. Ooh. I like, I like that idea, so, oh, I know what I'm going to do. After, oh, there, all day. Yes. Whoa. Sharpie Wonderland. Woohoo! <laughs> Sharpie's my favorite. I love this piece. Well, I did make it. I did make a hole in here. The craft knife is better for starting, but uh, it's less safe. So it's true. I like to see what can be done with scissors. I get nervous using those because I have to confess, in the course of making art. I have cut off the tip of one of my fingers oh, more than no. once. Yes, I have. I got to the point where I could just take out my own stitches without even thinking about it. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I have not been able to figure out like how to use it in yeah. appropriate use, but I always knew someday. <laughs> and this, and, if it's what I, yeah, this is the stuff that you can un unravel and then you can spread it out. Oh wow! It's We're for making it. bows, so it flattens out into this. Uh, I used it a little bit. Oh my goodness! I didn't. Oh, we can make flowers out of that. Yeah. You need good, good scissors, Carla. Yeah. Oh. You want to try with good sturdy industrial scissors. All right. I know there is something in oh. here that will work. Don't let me throw them all at you at once. 
And if this doesn't work, I will start oh, with the craft knife. These go. These will. Oh. These are the ones I wouldn't let my granddaughter have <laughs> by herself because ah. they were too sharp. Oh, oh that's Thank so pretty. Thank you. Now I'm going to put some blue in there and I think it's going to be purple. Yeah, or this is. This is a really good way to experiment with uh, colors because it's transparent. Mm -hmm. It's like RGB. RG oh. Yes, I'd like to explain to you all the difference between RGB and CMYK. I would love it's, to know. It's two different types of color. The CMYK is used for a print process. Okay. And C stands for cyan, which mm -hmm. is a type of blue. M stands for magenta. Mm -hmm. Y stands for yellow, and K stands for, that's like black, okay. believe it or not. Um, I don't know why it's K. Oh right, the, the ink cartridges on the printer have those yep. names on it. Yep, they do. And um, uh, CMYK is for printing, printing on flat, opaque surfaces, right? Now mm -hmm. RGB, that is transparent color. That's like the light that you oh. see. Now what's interesting? is when you do something in one color, you translate it, if, like if you do it in CMYK, mm -hmm. and translate it to RGB, you'll get a completely different color. Really? Yes. A hint for those who are going into print work. Don't ever, ever, ever use ultra green blue. <laughs> unless you try to make something look heavy, dark, and gray, because that's what happens to it. It will not reproduce it in, in RGB. You know, uh, I used to do a lot of work in the theater in college. Oh, and really? So I imagine those gels they would put over the lights would be RGB. That would be an RGB type color, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I had to learn a little bit about the way the color works with light and how it absorbs the, the spectrum yes. and stuff. And whoa, it was a lot. It's the and, science. You know, different it's colors actually are known to produce different moods. Oh, now, yeah. Let me tell you about this experiment that I read about that I thought was just amazing. They had a prison where they built four different wings mm. in a new part of the prison. And as an experiment, they painted the walls in each wing a different color. And one it was blue, one it was green, one it was pink, and one it was purple. Mm. Do you know where they had all the trouble and the fights and all sorts of stuff. Do you know what color that wing was? Purple. Purple? Yes, apparently purple is a color that just makes people upset. Really? Purple yes. is my favorite color. That's why I'm trying to make it out here. <laughs> well, I must point out that you are making a beautiful rose light. Oh. Yes, yes. All of these, all of these subtle variations of colors these changes. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when babies are born in you know, certain conditions where they're like jaundiced and mm -hmm. yellow, there's only one treatment that works to make them healthy, and that's putting them in a blue light. Ooh, I forgot about that. Yes, and it was recently discovered that people who have migraine headaches, if they sit in green light, it decreases the pain. Really? Yes, now I had a bad pain episode with a cold muscle mm -hmm. over Christmas, and I got all of these green lights and filled my, my living room with them. And you know, I felt so much better that I kept them on. Really? And I turn them on every night, and the pain that I have in my poor oh, little joints is so much Look at about this. It's a plant goes up from the ground, right? So if you draw it, you don't want to start from the top and go down. Always start from the bottom. And go up. Unlike this large vehicle is going around a corner struggling mightily to get itself going. Uh, you want to grow in the direction that the plant grows. So, plant tip. Okay, I don't know, I kind of like the basic shape right here. What do you think? I think, yeah, I really like it. You could do maybe something lower down, but... Yeah! Maybe it could come forward. Ooh, what was about this? Well, it's got like a grass. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Like when you have plants going around the bottom mm -hmm. of the tree, yeah, that yeah. would be a great place for some new flowers, too. You could put flowers mm -hmm. on the wall. I think that's a good idea. So, ooh, okay. so let's take, have you noticed oh, the trees? 
are very bright in the spring, and then as the summer goes along, they start getting a darker green, less oh. intense green. That is because the pigment changes. Have to do with what? Yeah. Yes, it does. And unfortunately, now that I'm starting this, I can't really fully explain the process. <laughs> Because I've gone brain dead on my junior high bot uh, at this point in my career. Do you know anything more about it? Let's see. Chlorophyll, let me see if I can reason it out. Chlorophyll is the stuff in plants that makes them green. And it also reacts with the sunlight to create sugar during photosynthesis. So my guess is that it uses up the chlorophyll to a certain extent by throughout the summer doing lots and lots of photosynthesis. And then it literally is extracted from the plant. But that's a total guess. We'd like you to tell us if you <laughs> know better. Look it up, but actually, if I own oh, June you know coming out this year, because right. I look up gators. Me too, yeah, we can gator to it. Yes, there are these insects that oh. lie, lie dormant for years and years, and then all of a sudden one year they appear. And you would not believe how loud these things are. Well, oh, you know, I think they have those in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think it might be cicadas. That cicadas, cicada? yes. I often mispronounce <laughs> these because I travel internationally and people from different countries use ah. these words much differently. Like, my son came home from England one time, like, pronouncing his, his H's that are silent. Ah. Speak, like, like herbs. Herbs, yes. Herbs. He goes, are you putting herbs in the, <laughs> in, in the, in the salad and uh, herbs? Herbs <laughs> what? <laughs> Who's herbs? Herb. Herbs, yes, who's herb? <laughs> yeah, and, and they have those in South Carolina, and they, uh, I think they come out every year, but they're like stronger some years than others, and they do in cycles, so like, the ones huh. that come out have been underground for a long time. Yes. Um, but yes, they're very loud, and they're very large, and my cats used to catch them when they were kittens. They would uh -huh. get, the one one got into the house, and they chased it around the house until they, they just lost its will to live. Oh no. Yeah, but the cats felt like they were seven beasts hunting because, you know, they were big. Oh yeah. One year um, when I went to uh, Taiwan, this was quite a while ago, um, the cicadas were out. And you know where you kept finding them? They have all these ornamental uh, uh, grills with like flower, mm. flower pictures and stuff with the, with the doors over there. And the cicadas would get stuck doors Whoa. and you would like then they'd sit and scream outside your door all night uh, until they saw it. It was people were like getting them out of their doors. Do you have June bugs here? Oh well they certainly have uh, they have um mayflies in Buffalo. Oh, is that June bugs? I don't remember June bugs. Is that we used, South to, thing? We used to have June bugs in Michigan and they oh, would really? bounce into our screen door. They were also about that big. Well, the world has changed. Yeah. The but they didn't make any crazy noise except for what we're learning. We're yeah. becoming yeah. multifaceted. Yeah. We are, and I have to say, you know, there are some things that have actually gotten better. Mm -hmm. For instance, I see so many people outside getting exercise. Mm. Now, I don't know where they would have been if they weren't outside exercising, but they sure weren't there last year when yes. I was out walking around. And People are getting healthier and families are doing things together mm -hmm. and there isn't going to be as much crowding in schools uh, open up um, as there was before, mm -hmm. which is something that I I used to always be disturbed by the way they crowded people. Because mm -hmm. I don't think you were one of the best crowd. And people are getting more one-on-one -on -one attention. When you go to the doctor, you get everyone's full attention because they will only serve one person at a time. That is absolutely true. So there are certain there are certain things that actually were were not entirely bad about this. Some of the animals, for instance, my sister who lives in New York told me that some of the rare animals mm -hmm. that wouldn't get together to have babies, who knows why, before are getting together now. Really? And new babies might grow. Yes, I think that they needed trials. Mm -hmm. I think that they just wanted a little time to themselves. Yeah, that makes sense. Dolphins are <laughs> So, just about everything that happens, it's not all good or all bad, it's kind of what you make of it. Yeah. 